Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Incompetent Nerds. I'm your host, Mark. Back with my good buddy, Tank. I don't have the cool nicknames that you always come up with. You should have said the um, lovely and gorgeous Tank. All right, let's not exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm cute. I could be cute. You're cute. You're cute. That's for sure. Uh, welcome, guys. We're back. It is August 2019. And keeping up with the switching the themes up on you guys, August, people think of August, think of sort of the last days of summer, if you will. Mm-hmm. So this episode and this month will be filled with uh, summer vacation stories and things to do, back to school memories. So we're going to have a lot coming at you this month, so stay tuned. But this week we're going to focus on specifically summer vacation memories that you did when you were at home as kids yeah. so tank take it away what are your let's go top three top three top three was of course bike riding going to the beach and just playing outside from like eight in the morning nine in the morning all the way to eight o'clock to nine o'clock at night yeah, like a good 12 hours. Like, I swear, and those will be the best sleep. And it even made it better when, you know, you after you've done all that, you showered up, had a nice home-cooked meal, and you sat on your couch and started playing some PlayStation or some Nintendo, ah. and then you just fall asleep <laughs> to be abruptly woken up by your mother or your parent saying, yo, go to sleep, go to your bed. Bed, go bed, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what about yeah, your top three? I mean, well, because you said that, like, you know, being in the suburbs, it was not as, like, well, you obviously played outside, but it was, like, not as easy to, like, find kids or whatever, because I, I lived on a street that was uh, more older folks. Yeah. Until I got to high school. But uh, video games was, like, or summer was, like, my first introduction to video games, because I, I think... My dad got me like uh, a PlayStation. Yeah. And uh and I got like a PlayStation 2 within the same year. It was like the the year the PlayStation 2 was coming out and I got a PlayStation and I got a PlayStation 2. So that was sort of when I started like I set up I set up the PS2, I set up the TV and that was like every day I would either play a game, find a game to play or something, watch a movie, watch movies and then we would go to Hollywood Video, which is no longer around, and Game Crazy, yeah, literally, nice. like, two to three times a week. And, like, we went to Hollywood Video, we rent, like, three, four movies, go to Game Crazy, trade in games, rent and get, like, three, four games, and then I was good for, like, that, that next week, you know? Yeah. And that was sort of, like, I don't know, that was that was just, like, my intro. Of, like, that's all I did. I, I woke up, I, I, remember, I remember days where I gamed for, like, 13 14 hours and i was like this is fun and it's like no one really had introduced me to video games before that and uh since i was like alone i I didn't i didn't know until later that uh that video games could be like social oh yeah when they started having online and yeah the online portion where but the social aspect of the uh the couch co-op yeah, well, I even I even remember like my first time when we got like internet that was fast enough. Like I plugged it to my PS3 and I I was like I was super excited to play Killzone 2, but that was the only game I had that had online capability at the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh well, this is the game we're gonna play, and then that's that's the game I started playing. And then you had it when I met you, and I was like, oh, we can play Killzone 2. Yep, and I was a big fan of Killzone from the PS2 days. Yeah, yeah, that was I'm, a great game. Yeah. Great game. I always claimed it was a great game, but if I go back and play it, it is a horrible game riddled with bugs. <laughs> Especially oh, yeah, yeah. Kills on one. But... Kills on one. It was just a horrible game just riddled with bugs. Kills on two yeah. was the better option. I love it. I loved it at the time. Oh yeah. But yeah, um let's break down some stories. I'll guess I'll go first. Uh, one story I had for summer vacation, and it's the one we always make fun of my mom about. Um, so it was one summer day. I forgot when. 
me and my siblings, my mother was asleep like she always was um, mm-hmm. throughout our childhood. She always took naps. <laughs> mm-hmm. She hates that when we say that. Um, but one time, we asked her while she was sleeping, like, hey, can we come? Uh, can we go outside? She was, yeah. So we went outside. It was early morning. Dude, we were outside for the longest, and we were in and out the house, but my mom was still asleep. My mom used to work uh, used to work late nights at this mm-hmm. time. Um, so most of the day, it's, she's asleep. So we're playing, but this was a weekend. And I'm guessing she thought, uh, you know, what you call it? Either or. It was, mm-hmm. a, it was a weekend. I remember that because she was off. Right, she right. just slept through that whole Saturday. That we were just out and about playing around. Dude, right now, it's 8 o'clock at night. The sun is already gone. We're playing hide and go seek in the dark. Um, and there's a bunch of us still. And I just remember hearing that awful sound. <laughs> My mother screaming our names and just yelling at us, saying, Get over here now! We're you're like, like four uh, blocks away, but you're like, <laughs> Gotta go, guys. No, we, um, we were younger. Um, we had a pretty decent sized backyard in an apartment complex. So everything mm. was in that backyard. Uh, Okay. Basketball, baseball, kickball. Oh, Hell, like we made use of the space. Um, of the space, yeah. Yeah, and it, it was, was pretty it decent. It was a multi-purpose space. Yeah, it was pretty decent size. But if you, if I show you it, like next time, like bro, because I, I don't live too far from there. But if I show you like the childhood apartment me and my siblings grew up in in the backyard, you're going to be like, yo, this place is not that big. I'm like, well, when you're a child, it's huge. And Wait, is it was it concrete or was it grass? Concrete. Okay. So you can you already know all the bruises and tearing and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was harsh. We all got scars from our elbows, knees, yeah. hands, all everything from falling on that falling on a damn pavement. But um, we have uh, so that night she yelled. So we, it was me and you know in the complex we had a bunch of other kids in the building as well. Yeah. Um, they all got freaked. They're all freaking out, thinking they're in trouble too. Because my mom is yelling. It just sounded. It just sounded like everybody's mom all at once. It was yep. just your mom though. Yep. <laughs> so we all freak out. So we all come up. And she's like, "Get in the fucking house!" We're like, "Ah, oh, shit!" So we get in the house. She yells at us, talking about how were you guys outside all day? Oh, blah blah yeah. blah. Just, but we're like, "Well, we kept the door closed because <laughs> we always kept the back door. We either keep the back door open." And just the screen door closed, or we'll just keep both doors closed. But, you know, you, you have that lock to leave it open. Right. So that's what we did. And I'll never forget, she made us... She was mad at us, but then again, we we told her, like, we did tell you, you said okay, and you never came outside to ask us to come back in. Like, what did you expect? Mm-hmm. Um, but, shockingly, she made us she made us a meal. We all took a shower. And I just remember fucking laying down and just falling asleep. I feel like you told that story before. I think I have, but but maybe it's a maybe it's like a, a re just a reoccurrent memory for you. It's probably happened more than once. Oh yeah, Dude, we have. Um, that was like one of the major ones. But there's many times my mother just like she said she'll take naps. Um, there's a few times she took naps while we were outside. She'll wake up, yell at us. <laughs> not yell at us but yell for us to come inside yell eat lunch us. yeah uh, eat lunch eat dinner whatever breakfast because dude there'll be times we'll be out there early in the morning mm-hmm. like just start playing just going nuts um mm-hmm. and that's just you know summer it's like woohoo nine o'clock don't have to go to school let's go just jump in the just run in the backyard meet up with your friends whatever because if even if you even though if you were the only one back there just, yeah Bouncing a ball, and we made like we had some makeshift ass hoops. Mm-hmm. Give it about an hour, because that means once every all these kids hear, doom, 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 doom. Oh shit! Andrew's outside. Let me eat your breakfast. Let's go. Let's go. And it's like, you know, just give it an hour, because these kids are either waking up, brushing teeth, or just piling down a fucking bowl of cereal, and they'll be outside in a bit. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, it, it was like that. It happened. 
But then you guys um, didn't. You guys didn't have a time. Everybody just sort of ended up at the same place. Yeah, and we all it was in the backyard all the time. Then when, that's when we started getting older. That's when we started to bike ride around the neighborhood, uh, mm-hmm. going to different parks, different areas, play basketball, baseball, football. Um, yeah, we started doing that. Everything, like when we were young, everything imaginable. Yeah, like ten years, ten years old. When we were like ten and younger, it was strictly the backyard. Yeah, you cannot go out. But as soon as we hit like twelve, fourteen, that's when we were able to start heading out. Uh, we'll bike right around the neighborhood. We'll head to the park. We'll start. Um, that's start so funny. Parks. Cause mine was like the complete opposite. So like I was playing video games like as I got older, but then when I was younger, I was always in uh, I was in daycare like during the school year. So daycare had this like these like summer camps or you know just like you go there and it's like yeah. a camp. But every week we had like a field trip. So like one week we would go to the beach. One week we would go to like Magic Mountain, Raging Waters. One week we would go to Hurricane Harbor, the other one, right? And so it was like I was like a ten year old. And I was like, yeah, I've been, I've been like, I've been in the Natural History Museum. I've been here. I've been here. I've been here. And they're like, teachers would be like, how did you go all these places? And I was like, oh, I was in daycare. Like, <laughs> <laughs> My but it was, it was cool. Yeah, it was cool just to like have that, have that mix up of, of like your day. Cause, and then, you know, once a week we did like something with water, like, like a water fight, like slip and slide like that we had got those giant slides once that had water on them one time um you know they got one of those like inflatable slides but it was just it was just a slide right it was it wasn't yeah. like uh there wasn't water involved yeah and uh, i think i was like in second or third grade and there was no like there was no teachers around they just like sort of let us like hang out there and so i was like guys i have a great idea and I like took the hose and I ran it up there and I just started like spraying the slide and I was like, "All right, everybody, like j- go down." You just created a water <laughs> and slide. Then, and I created a water slide and then I got, I got in so much. Or it was like it was weird because like they came out and they were like, "What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing?" And and I was like, "We made a water slide," and they're like, "Can you do that?" And I was like. <laughs> You guys never said we couldn't do that. And they're like, yeah. I guess he's right. <laughs> so I didn't really get in trouble. That was great. I just love how the dots are like, can he do that? <laughs> but I just remember the guy, the guy's face when he came to pick it up. He was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. What did these guys do? <laughs> we never had one after that. That's probably why. They're like, yeah, keep the holes away from this guy. That kind of reminds me of uh, like <clears throat> stories of my uh, my uh, my mother's upbringing. Because um, even summertime when I was kids, we used to go around to like other neighborhoods, and they'll pop open mm-hmm. the pump and just start yeah. shooting out the water. I just remember like doing all that, and I remember my mother told me a story of my younger cousin um, that he used to walk around with the fucking wrench. <laughs> Uh, it was her. It was her younger cousin. Um, he used to walk around with the wrench, and pop open the fucking um, the the fire hydrants. The fire hydrant. Yeah. And the, and any summer on the summer days, just pop open the fire hydrants and start opening the water. And you're just like, this little punk is five, six years old. What is he doing? <laughs> He's like walking around like the next firefighter. Yeah, and the wrench is like bigger than him, but he's just like, yeah, I got this. Yeah, he was sixth in was... Crenshaw. Consider it done. <laughs> that was him doing. And he'd walk around with a pacifier at that. <laughs> like my mom was like, he was a badass, and that's what he used to do. He used to walk around with uh with a pacifier in his mouth, with the wrench to open up the the fire hydrant and just. Will open up, and as soon as the cops or anybody comes to close it, they wouldn't expect a kid. They'll expect an adult. Um, nothing happens. Yeah, you can get like fine for that, right? Yeah, like a lot of fine. Like nobody expected a kid. Everybody's expecting an adult. Right, right. But there's nobody to blame, and the wrench is somewhere hiding. They'll go about the their business. Seriously, disappeared. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. They they'll go about their business, and he just comes back. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's. I think it, it's like really, it's really illegal here because of like you know the years we had a drought and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, it's like not allowed. And then, uh, and then when I was like seven or eight, that was like when the whole Enron energy thing was happening. When they were like. They were taking energy out of California during like peak times and like shutting down power plants and then like selling it back to us like very at like very high rates. So it was like really illegal, right? Yeah. But uh, the, I remember there were some summer days where it was like from I don't know maybe ten to five, like you couldn't have the AC on or like the power would just go out some days. Yeah. So it, it would be like we had to go either to like a grocery store or like somewhere where there was like. AC, even if it was just for an hour, you know? Yeah. That just reminded me. Um, I got that going on today between 1 and 6, the peak time. Oof. So, it's not ideal. Yeah, so after this, I'm actually going to just get my butt ready and go enjoy some summer fun. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh, so I know we're just halfway through the memories, but everybody, to let everybody know, I am on vacation. My first summer, yes. I have an actual summer vacation. Well, golf clap for you <laughs> just um <laughs> yeah you got six weeks off what are you gonna do any any highlights well since today's peaks to... time whatever at one o'clock i gotta make sure everything's turned off completely so we get some money back for uh uh energy and two i don't know i'm probably just gonna go out there and walk around Okay, okay. It's a nice plan. Yeah. Love a good walk. Town. Go for a nice little walk. Nice. Like, um, I, I don't know. I feel like that was that was always kind of why I like stayed stayed in education is because I just I always loved having the summer, dude. Even even if you know during this time is like when I was like, oh, I'm like getting kind of restless. I need something to do. Blah blah blah. But like I've all you know, it's always nice to have like a time off. You know. Oh no, I agree. Like people, people who work during the summer always always seem just like they seem like they don't even give a crap either that they're at work. You know, like nothing, nothing productive gets done. Oh, bro, I hate it. You know what I mean? Like I feel like as Americans, we should just decide collectively that these three months are are not for anything <laughs> good to get done. Bro, like I hate this so bad. Every summer, and I'm at work, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I just wish I was, like, back in high school again or, you know, back as a kid again and just just enjoy the summer. Because every time I go outside for a cigarette and I feel the heat or I feel the wind and I just, I'm like, what's stopping me from walking back into this motherfucking building? Yep. Oh, that's right. Bills. Life. I gotta walk <laughs> into this building. <laughs> yeah. But no, there's many times where I just feel like Ugh, I want to freaking enjoy summer. I want to go outside. I want to just go for a walk or jump in, the, jump in the fucking pool or beach or somewhere. But that's the thing. It's like you do all those things, and it's, you, maybe you can spend like a week, and then you're like, well, now what? <laughs> yeah. Now what? What do I do next? Hell. Help me. <laughs> Summer summer's definitely got to be a time where, like, you need to say, like, I'm going to learn how to do this and then, like, go do it. That way you can be like, okay, I did this during this summer, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but another good memory um, to get back on track, another good memory was yeah. going to the beach. Um, so famous beach in Chicago is called North Avenue Beach. Um mm-hmm. I think I told you many times about it. It always attracts... It's like the number one beach in the city that attracts everybody. Not just the natives, but also freaking uh, tourists as well. Mm -hmm. Every time they come to summer, they go to North Avenue Beach. And when I was a kid, I just remember constantly complaining to my mother that I was that I carried a heavy-ass cooler. Yes, you told me this story. I love it. I hate it. I the always hate it. But um, there was nothing fun. It was always fun just finally getting into our spot. We always had a just we had a spot. So <clears throat> we used to cross we used to cross this bridge over the highway, 
Oh, snap. Why did that... Mm-hmm. Fucking... No, don't disturb my podcast. Stupid phone. So we used to park by... Um... This is when it was super cheap. But we used to park by uh, Lincoln Park Wait, Zoo. It, you have to pay to get in the beach? Or, or are you talking no, about the parking? Parking. Pay for the parking. Oh, okay. So when it was super cheap, you had to pay... Um, we used to park in the Lincoln Park Zoo parking lot. Park there... And then when we cross this, we'll cross the bridge over the Lakeshore uh, High Lakeshore Drive, cross the mm-hmm. bridge over, and to the left, about twenty feet, boom, was our spot. We always mm-hmm. sat there. It was in the grass. My mom hates the sand. She preferred always to be in the grass area, mm-hmm. and that was a spot. And once we set up, she'd be like, "Go," and we used to book it. And that hot ass sand just running down the damn, just running down, uh, running down the sand, just heading towards the, the water. Yeah. yeah. And I just never, for, I just never forget just that hot ass sand, that feeling of your feet slowly cooking. <laughs> yeah. It's like and, you, th- you think you can handle it and then it gets worse and worse and worse and oh worse. Oh my God. And then you had to dig your feet into the sand where it feels cooler. Oh, see, I never take a quick did that. Break. I learned, like, I that probably happened to me two or three times, and I was like, all right, I need to see what this flip-flop game is all about. And then that's when you realize, like, everybody in California wears flip-flops. We had our flip-flops, but we just never wore, wore them to get into the water, left them, because... Yeah, you just were, like, that, super excited. Yeah, and not just that, is that that mindset, like, if I take off, if I use my flip-flops to get all the way to the water... Take them off to get into the water. Come back out. The possibility they're gonna be gone. And I'm yeah. gonna get an ass kicking from my mama. So we just said fuck it. But what I used to do was, and me and my siblings used to do it. If we couldn't handle the heat anymore, we would run to a certain point and dig our feet within the sand, because okay. underneath it is cooler. And we used to chill right. there for like a good minute. Went to the feet cool off. We're like, okay. Let's go! And we'll start running again. <laughs> <clears throat> and usually by that time, we've been in the water. We're happy. We're jumping around, swimming. Um, I just missed it. Like North Avenue Beach. Uh, a few weeks ago, I went back to the beach uh, with my girlfriend and her daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, that just brought back a lot of memories, too. We had a little cooler, a blanket. Um, Were you carrying the cooler? Yes, I was carrying the cooler. <laughs> well, lucky for me, it wasn't like those igloo fucking huge ones that had no wheels and only handles and mm-hmm. filled with ice and all types of extra shit that you felt like your arms about to fall off. I swear to God, I felt like my mom was slowly trying to build up a bodybuilder at the age of eight. <laughs> Until like, we got I don't the know wheels. how much, how much la- weights are to lift, but... It's got to be more than this cooler. Oh, my God. And then we finally got the uh, the cooler with the wheels. I loved it. But back yeah. to that story. Yes, I was carrying the cooler for my girlfriend. But she had a small bag, the one with the bag. So we bought some mice. All I had to do was wrap that around my uh, my shoulder, and I was good to go. We had water, soda, and freaking, you know, I don't drink soda like that. But we had water, soda, and um, sandwiches already pre-made and some chips. So that was a little snack while we were out there. And... We had a good time. Like, it drained us so bad. And I remember this as a kid, too. But it drained us so bad. As soon as we got home and showered up. Yeah, dude, he does that to you. I mean, even when I was little, going to, like, my first Dodger games and going to baseball games, we would go usually on, like, Sundays. But sometimes, you know, when it's summer, you can go, like, the 12-10 games during the day. Yeah. And... Being in that heat for three, four hours, you get home. I, you know, even you know before you, you drank, used to drink alcohol and stuff. Where like that makes it ten times worse. Yeah, you, you just drink drinking water and soda. You just pass out, you know, because yep. you're just exhausted. The heat does that, or the sun does that more, more so. Oh man, I that's imagine. why <laughs> at the beach it's like I really. I really hate when they like uh, make you spend money because it's like, or they charge whatever they want. Because in in California, it's like the beach is a culture. It's not just like the beach. There's like restaurants and bars and like 
bike rentals and all that stuff, right? And it's yeah. crazy overpriced. But uh, it's like you're going to spend it because you're just like, oh, I need this lemonade right now. I don't care that it's $8. <laughs> yeah, because you're just dying of thirst or just, uh, yeah. um, or just the heat. Yep. I just remember chucking bottles of cold water. Just good, good, good. Because it's right. like I'm thirsty or I'm hot or feeling that dehydration is already slowly kicking in. And you're just like, yeah, Ugh. it's like it's hitting, it's hitting you real slow. Yeah. Today, like today, my mom's heading to the pool, my sister, and they wanted me to go. I was like, yeah, I got to do an episode. <laughs> was it the is it a community pool? Explain to me how that works. So. Uh, there are a few community pools that are free to go to. I have gone to several of them as a kid. I'll bring those stories up too. But so they're the ones... just—they're free. They're not like yeah, no. It's like sand, sandlot kind of thing where it's just like anybody can go there. Kids, <laughs> adults, anybody. Yeah, it's uh, the community pools, or they're all run by Chicago Park District, so they're all free. Go on in. Okay, so it's like a park thing. Could... Yeah, yeah. We yeah. have we have like one community pool I think that I know of. That, like, my mom, I think he said she used to go to, but I, I never went to it. No, but there's uh, – my mom, she hates the community pools because the first thing she thinks of is just um, disgusting fungus, blah, 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 bunch of dirty – bunch of dirty people just jumping in the pool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's my mother just being very uh, germaphobic. Mom. <clears throat> yeah. Just being a mom. Um, so instead of going to community pools – I, she never took us to a community pool to tell you the truth when we were kids. Um, okay. It was always uh, like the small water parks, like the outskirts yeah. of the city. Um, right, right, right. So, like, today, she, I forgot the one, but I there's a few that she usually is like, that she usually goes to. Mm-hmm. And I've been to a few of them with her. And that's where she's going off today. Like, when I was a kid, my grandmother took us to a community pool, and then my father took me to a community pool once. Um, and I'll never forget the one my father took me to because the water went, no bullshit, 12 feet deep. Mm-hmm. And as a kid, I love, you know, I always loved to swim. <clears throat> Even to today, I love I love to swim. I swim, I could float, all that shit. I don't need any floaties or none of that. I could just prop my body up, and you just see me there just floating. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's all because my father threw, I was like four or five years old. He told me if I wanted to swim, I'm like, yeah, he threw me in a five foot pool, five foot deep pool. And I'm over here paddling and damn near drowning. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I finally got the hang of it. Yeah. That's the, that's the one thing I never, I never got around to is, uh, being around a pool long enough to like swim really really well i just like you know my mom was always at work so it was just like something i never got around to yeah well we weren't like i was at it was my uncle's this memory is very is this memory is very hazy but Mm -hmm. it was my uncle's house when he used to live in the city Mm -hmm. um he had a pool in the backyard it was just one of those you know prop the ones that you just build and just keep back there forever mm-hmm. until the buses or some shit like that well that's the pool yeah job. and i remember my father throwing me in and i'm flailing like i trying to get out and um trying to swim towards the the ladder but i keep like that's when you know your instincts just kicked in especially as a kid my instincts kicked in next you know yeah and how to swim yeah 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 um, it's like a, it's an innate thing. It's yeah. so crazy that like when you when you get older, that just is like gone. But when you're a kid, it kicks in into overdrive. Yeah, it's like fine. Like you don't even think about it. You're you're terrified, but like you just do it. Yep. Yeah, um, I never forget that. And the community pool I went to, uh, it was a summer vacation as well. Uh, they used to have this these heavy bricks, and when they used to throw it in the water and sink all the way to the bottom and you had to swim 12 feet deep to grab mm-hmm. it and swim back up uh I'll never forget i panicked <laughs> <laughs> first time i ever panicked i went down but i didn't get enough i didn't uh 
I didn't get a good chance to like, well, no, what's the word? Let's just say I fucked up when trying to hold my breath. Oh, okay. So as soon as I get there, I get to the bottom, grab the brick. Mm-hmm. Now I'm coming up, but I didn't realize how heavy this fucking brick was. Mm-hmm. So now I'm just trying to swim up with one hand, helping pulling me up and my leg kicking my feet. And mm-hmm. then that's where I realize, oh, shit. I'm not breaching the I'm not breaching the surface. Every time I wave my hand, I'm thinking I'm about to hit the surface. I'm not. So I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm trying and I start panicking because the brick is holding me down. Yeah. And top it off, I'm pretty heavy set guy. Even as a kid, I was, you know, I was a chubby kid. So it was like, holy, I'm not gonna make it. Let go of the brick. And I start swimming up now. And, bro, I still felt like it was an eternity because I can't fucking <laughs> reach the, I can't break the surface. I can't reach through the air. And by that time, panic, I started panicking even more. I started freaking out. And then finally, that <gasps> kicked in because I breached the surface. I was yeah. like, oh, my God. So I gave it a minute. Relax. I started feeling dizzy and woozy. And then finally, I'm like, okay, I'm going to give this another try. This time, I held my breath correctly. When I dove in, I dove in just enough to give me enough momentum to get farther down faster. Mm-hmm. Boom, grabbed the brick and was able to come up with it. Nice. And I was able to do that several times. And I want to say I was like 13. How I'm heavy a- was the brick? Heavy enough where that bitch could be all the way sunk to the bottom. I don't know, maybe like five <laughs> pounds, six pounds. Oh wow, that's like a lot. That's like your body weight when you're like fourteen. <laughs> but it was like yeah, about five, six pounds, and just trying to come up from that depth with that bar. And it wasn't like a, it wasn't like it was a small brick or like like a tile. No, it was like an actual brick, but it right, was all right, right. rubber. Like, just think of an an actual brick, but just all rubber. That's what it was. Just all the way at the bottom. Oh, my God. And even it was funny because if you dove in and somebody just dropped the brick and you just hear this, once it hits the bottom, you hear the sound. You hear the sound. It was hilarious. Mm -hmm. It was made of boom. Yeah, that's crazy. (laughs) What about you? that scares me even to this day. <laughs> uh, so about you, homie? Um, uh, pools. Anything pools? Like that? Yeah, I mean that's great. It, it. I never. I never did the pool thing. You know, I never. Uh, we. It was always like from very early age. It was like the beach, and I was around the water and I went in the water, but I never like. No one ever threw me in the ocean to like learn how to swim. So like, you know, never was never had that experience. But uh, I would rather see like my in the pool than in the ocean. <laughs> what? I said, yeah, I would rather see my in the pool than the ocean. First, very do, first conquer right? the pool, then conquer the ocean. Right. Yeah. So who knows? But for me, it was always like the beach you know i was like there was a lot of sports i learned how to play like volleyball and frisbee that was like and paddle ball i did that all on the beach when i was like really little so i learned how to do all that and water parks too water parks were like a big one not really pools not really pools we weren't around i wasn't around a pool till i was like in high school and then i was like oh shit we can go to the pool yeah you know what's funny is when I was in college in in Arizona when it was cold, I was like I was down to go to a pool in like December. I was like, Yeah, somebody has a pool, like let's go in the pool. And they were like, What is this kid talking about? But <laughs> I think it's funner it's funner when it's like you don't have it as an option for a long time. Yeah. When it is an option, you're oh my gosh. When it is an option, you're just like, eh, it's okay talking about pools and stuff uh my uncle how do you how do you feel about kids now in pools 
Like, do you <clears throat> wish there, I think feel like they should have like adult only pools. <laughs> I don't know. Like they do in, in Vegas where people drink and get crazy. True, but that's more because of Vegas' theme. Um But it's ironic, right? Because like people who get drunk, like they literally act the same as children and you're like, Oh, true. I don't want to have a kid here. <laughs> <laughs> true. He's like, let me take my child to another place because <clears throat> everybody here is drunk and just off the rails. Um yep. Me, it's just I don't care. It's the pools, the pool, and the pl- pool places I always gone to always had like three, four pools, and a kiddie pool, of course, uh, or a kiddie okay. area. So okay. I wouldn't have to worry about my sister much because she's over there running around. Um, but usually, it's like me and my siblings when we go to like today, like we'll go to the pool with um all of our kids. We're always like if they have a diving board, we're over there. Mm-hmm. Because one, you need to be of a certain age to dive, and two, we're over here diving and just treading water because that the that diving pool is like a good ten to twelve feet deep, maybe even fifteen feet deep, mm-hmm. depending on the board they were jumping off of it. Oh my god, the, my fear of heights kick in because they have um, the one we go to have two diving boards. Mm-hmm. One's like at towards the level of the pool, not that high up. But when every time I walk there and jump, my fear of heights kick in. Okay. And then there's another one that's about a good maybe 10, 12 feet high. Mm-hmm. Oh, that one hurts me. Like, really bad. Like, my fear of heights kick in and everything. It's like, I can't, you know, I can't do this. And I only did it, I think, I jumped off that board two times. So even as an adult, I'm fucking afraid. Okay, okay. Even as a kid, like diving boards and all that stuff, no, can't do it, because my fear kicks in. But um, it, it happens. It happens. But there's another story I want to talk about. Okay. <clears throat> so summer vacations, on certain days, my uncle would take all the nieces. Well, not all, but most of the nieces and nephew to uh to hotels, mm-hmm. and it was mainly because of the pools. Um, mm-hmm. so it'd be like me, my brother, my sister, and then his kid, um, his kids, um, and whoever else, like, dude, no bullshit. It'd be like 10 of us. Tw- it'd be like, sometimes it'd be like five to like 10 and it'd be crazy, mm-hmm. but we'll always go to the pool and mm-hmm. we'll always go to the hotels and go to the pool. But then later, late nights, depending on the hotels that we stood at, um, we should just like, Hey, is he sleeping? Cool. Let's go. We used to run <laughs> and play like tag or whatever out in the hotel. Um, so, you know, there's some ho- hotels like. Um, okay, remember how the Luxor is? How it's all open yeah. in the middle? Yeah, yeah. Well, like hotels that are like that. Oh, like an open courtyard concept? Yeah, there you go, yeah. So, yeah. every time we go to a hotel, hotel buildings that are like that, dude, we yeah. so fucking book it. You see, see us running down these, uh, down just the balconies, and we used to create rules like, oh, you can't go to this floor, this floor, and we used to <laughs> run and hide and take the stairs and try to be real quiet. When we'll see the adults, we'll pretend like we'll, we'll just walk, pretend like nothing happened. Like, oh, we just <laughs> went to the vending machine, and then once that hit that corner, vroom! <laughs> we used to do that. We used to do that at museums too, because we went to like. We would go to like the California Science Center and then the, the Natural History Museums right next to it. So we would, this was like really involved. This was like crazy. We we had uh, we we all had a map, right? Yeah. And we had different teams. And you know, have you ever played that game with like the clothespin where it's like everybody has a clothespin and your goal is to get rid of it. So you have to put it on somebody, but if they notice you, you have to take theirs. So then you have two you have to get rid of. Oh yeah 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 I played that um. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. So we we played that, but we played it like we played it the the opposite way. So like your goal was to collect as many as possible. Yeah. Uh, but to start out, like we all we all had to put it on on people that weren't playing the game, like adults and like random people. <laughs> so we're just like running around the museum, like looking for people with clothespins on them. And then when people, like, notice that it's on them, they get all freaked out. Yeah, they're like, what the fuck? So I, I, I remember, like, 
there was this mom there and she had like two on her. I don't know how I, I was like, we were like, we got really good at it. And she, she noticed and she got all like, she was like freaked out. And then I, I like, I pretended I was like little, but I like pretended I was like a, a museum like curator or yeah. like a security guy. And I was like, I'll take those for you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> but we would like, when you would get to like staircases, we would like run and like jump over like the railings to like find people and like chase them down. Yeah. Because the goal was like to try to be sly about it, but that's that was fun. But then when you're in front of adults, you're just like, yeah, nothing to see here. Yeah, no, just don't worry about it. Just go ahead, everybody, back to the business, mind your business, and just do it again and just book it. Yep. Oh man. Uh, memories of a kid when summer vacation, riding bikes. You can't forget blowing up fireworks. Yep, oh, fireworks man. was the uh, best. We never uh, fireworks. Is fireworks? Are legal. Okay. They're legal or illegal? Illegal in they're illegal in Los Angeles County. They are legal in Ventura County. So people just drive outside LA County, shoot them off, have a good time, and go back home. Yeah, they're. The small, like, bottle rockets, um, cherry bombs, they're all sparklers. Fine. Yeah, they're all fine. But all the major shit, that's not. That's, uh... Oh, big boys. Yep. Um, those, you gotta go to out of state. Because in the state of Illinois, and I want to say in Chicago, they're illegal. Um, so a lot of folks just go out of state to Indiana, buy a crap ton come back yeah yeah that's what they'll do at the like state line or the county line they'll like go to ventura buy them and then drive back home but uh in in uh where i grew up they have a they have a show at the the like mall yeah so people like people that's what they do is they just like bring their rv bring their shit bring some blankets camp out at the mall that they turn out all the lights and people just watch the show and it's like it's a lot easier. Yeah. But it, it was kind of it's kind of crazy because basically everybody's at the mall at that time, right? It's like a lot of people in like a very small, like square yard, square mile area. Yeah. And one time it's kind of sad. This like um, this people used to line up on the sidewalks, you know, to see the to see the show. And then when the show's over, like, the people on the sidewalks would just, like, hang out there because, like, you know, there was traffic. They had nowhere to be. They were already – they were chilling. But the cars would, like, leave who were – people who parked in their cars. And uh, and one year this lady uh, – this, this car was, like, making this left turn and this other car was making, like, a right turn in the same lane. And they he, the, he, the guy pressed the, the gas instead of the brake. Yeah. So he T-boned the car, and then the car T-boned the streetlight, but the, the lady and her kid was was in the middle. Yeah. So she, she sort of, like, turned her back to the car to, like, save her, her son. And so she was pinned between the car, the two cars and the pole with her son, but her son was fine because she did that, but she died. Oh. But after that, they were like, nobody, you can't sit, you can't stand there anymore yeah it was like uh it was like a big deal but it was like it was crazy because everybody tried you know everybody was trying so hard to like you know have a safe place for people to go to see fireworks and then like you know there's still tragedy it's crazy you just you never know all right so we're not gonna end on a sad note thank you for that mark you're welcome you're welcome (laughs) Um. <clears throat> yeah, the folks in Chicago would just go to Illinois. I mean, go to Indiana, buy them, come back to the city, and just blow them up. And the cops. Do they catch people? Like, do they actively go seek out? Like, they don't actively go. Cause here, it, I've seen I've seen people like they go, they've gotten in trouble. Like, I feel like I don't know what happens if they arrest you or fine you or whatever. But like, I think for us is a fine. Um, but. A lot of cops here just don't really give a fuck because every city block is blowing some shit up and yeah, don't have time. you don't have enough cops for that. 
people are actually shooting each other in Chicago. They they don't have time to worry about some fireworks. Yeah. So I think Chicago, the city of Chicago, has about twelve thousand five hundred cops. And mm-hmm. twelve thousand five hundred cops is not enough for about what three million, three million people living in the city. Mm-hmm. Especially that a good portion of those people are blowing up fireworks in every other city block. Yeah, no. What they're worried about is motherfuckers actually committing major crimes. Yeah. So they really don't care now. Don't get me wrong. We did growing up. We did run into a few fucking you know hardhead hard um. Hard asses. Hard asses, but um, yeah, everything was fine. Like nothing your smooth talking couldn't handle. First of all, I was a kid, and it was my folks who did all the smooth talking. <laughs> your mom's smooth talking, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mom hated the fucking cops growing up. She got pulled over last time when we were kids, um, leaving the the carnival. Yeah, in the summer, we we're leaving the carnival. Um, Got in the car, we're driving off, she gets pulled over, and she goes, what the fuck? So, and it was the Puerto Rican Fest, and that also counts as summer, because it is the middle of June. Mm-hmm. And cops pulls her over, it's me and my siblings on the back seat, asking her for license registrations, looks and see all of us. I'm staring right at this motherfucker with the flashlight in my eyes and everything, like, why you pull us over? I'm tired. I want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> At first, you know, as a kid, your mom gets pulled over by a cop. The first thing you think of, she's going to get in jail. <laughs> and I don't want to be in this car by myself. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I think the first time my mom got pulled over, I cried. I straight up cried. Oh, my God. I did it. I did it with my dad, too. And I was like, I don't know. I was. I was probably 12. I was, you know, maybe not an appropriate age to be yeah, crying you anymore. Sandpaper on something? Oh, no, that was my knee. Sorry. Yeah. Man, this, this computer is so sensitive to anything, any sound. Like, you hear the fan, you hear all the weird stuff going on. Yeah, it's like you can't. It's like that moment you, you stay still, it's like, okay, cool. And then you start getting a little antsy and everything. It's like, oh, fuck, there he goes again. I got to call him out. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. <laughs> I gotta be better about it. I'm calm. There's no reason for me to be moving my leg. Yeah. Um, no, but I did it with my dad, and I was bawling. Like, I was tears, snot, everything. And the cop just walks up, and he's just like, uh, just wear your seatbelt next time. And then walks <laughs> away. And my and my dad's like, oh, I didn't know that was going to work. <laughs> he's like, oh, shit, that actually works. Like, do that more often. <laughs> Oh man, no, I got. Um, it was funny. I got. What was it? It was uh, my brother's father when we were kids. Um, I was young, and in, I was in the car, and he was speeding, mm-hmm. and that was due to uh, I actually had a fever. Okay. Um, so he's speeding to the children's hospital. It was him, my Altruist. mom. Yeah. It was him, my mom, and me, and um, he gets pulled over for speeding and. Um, he tells the cop that, you know, my son's in the back. He's sick. He has a fever. We're rushing to um, the hospital. It was children's name. I was. I think I was going to. Um, and the cop let them pass. Like, go ahead. And it's like you really don't hear like cops like that nowadays. Like you hear like maybe some, but you always hear like all the negative shit. Yeah. Well, like. Especially if it deals know. with like a child, like I need to get my child, to, I need to get my child to the hospital. Like they're sick. They're like, oh, before you go, you're gonna take this ticket. It's like you piece of shit. You gotta run my place and everything. And my freaking child has a temperature of 107 degrees. Well, it, it's interesting because it's like some. It's like interesting what they choose to be altruistic about. Yeah. Like I, I this is like a, it, we got way off topic, but like what else is new? But like. What I th- like, my mom always had the same opinion of cops. Not because, not because we d- were doing anything wrong, but just because like they don't have your best interests at heart. No. In in certain instances, like if they're giving you a ticket, like they don't care about you or your finances. They just care about meeting a quota or you know whatever whatever people believe in, right? Yeah. But in certain instances, like I've been in situations where like cops have been have been really nice in, in situations where they didn't have to be nice. 
So it's always just sort of like what situation you find yourself in and, and what you need them for. Like, uh, I remember one time I was, uh, I was speeding in, uh, in college in Arizona and I was coming down this hill, but it, it, you know, I had a big truck. It's a, it's a big hill. Like you're going to pick up speed. Like yeah. if I'm not on the brake, it's going to, you're going to go a little fast. And, uh, you know, a cop pulls me over and he's like, Oh, you know, uh, let me uh you know you're speeding i was like yeah you know i apologize it was a big hill big truck whatever and he's like oh, okay no problem let me uh let me just run your license and uh and your plates and and i'll be right back and he didn't say he was gonna give me a ticket or anything and i was like okay and i, I like i was really mad i was like oh I'm like f this guy right he's gonna give me a ticket and he comes back and he's like all right man just uh you know just take it easy or whatever i'm like oh wow those interaction didn't go how I thought, but I was like, just out of curiosity, like, uh, like, what did you run run the plates for? And he's like, uh, oh, uh, the reason I pulled you over is because uh, your vehicle fit the description of a a wanted murderer in Phoenix, and uh, I just wanted to make sure that you weren't him. And I was like, oh shoot, okay, like, oh shit, <laughs> okay, um, yeah. <laughs> I swear, like I swear, after that I thought about like, okay, do I need to paint the truck? Like, to just like, <laughs> what should I so do to not look... <laughs> You paint the what? truck. Now somebody's really be like, hmm. Yeah, now they get his suspicious. Truck. <laughs> now he's very suspicious. <laughs> but it was just funny that like, uh, I don't know. I thought it, the guy would, he didn't even care that I was speeding. He just wanted to make sure I didn't kill somebody. Yeah. Dude, you know who I would love to see have an interaction with some cops? Jordan King. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, shoot. Did I say his last Am I not allowed to say his last name? Well, that is his last name, guys. We outed him. I'm sorry. He's, he's, well, he's going to be running for, he's going to be a politician one day anyway. So his, he's going to be a public, he's going to be a property of the public. Yeah, we, we're going to vote for him. we got to support the kid. First of all, how are we going to vote for somebody in New Hampshire? I'm talking about when he w- runs for, like, bigger things, you know? Oh, when he runs for, like... Okay, I can see it. I guess we can never vote for him as senator unless... Uh, president and... I don't know what else. What else we can vote for him as, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, we definitely will. But I would love to see his interaction with a cop. Is it me, or is it like, if... If the cop will pull Jordan over just for some bullshit, you think Jordan would be like, fuck you, fuck this, that's some bullshit. <laughs> you know in, uh, in Goodwill Hunting where where Will, like, he gets, he always gets arrested and he goes to court and then he, like, argues the constitution, like, some constitutional thing from, like, the 17th century and he, like, gets off. <laughs> Wait, what? No. I so never... he had, like... Will like Will Hunting the character gets in all these fights. Yeah, and he he goes to jail right, and he gets arrested. But whenever he goes to try, like the judge, he cites some like example of like his rights from like the 1700s that allows him to like have free speech or whatever, or wh- however he spends it. And he always gets off. And then the <laughs> judge finally is like, "Son." It's not 1700 anymore. <laughs> and then that's when he makes him go see Robert Williams, a therapist. But that's hilarious. <laughs> I, can't, I can only imagine. So can only imagine. Not it anymore. Oh, that's good. Yeah, but they're just doing a job. Yeah. Most, I, I, always, I always feel like people are inherently good. Just gotta, just gotta have the right circumstances. Unless you're a murderer in a pickup truck that looked like Mark's. Yeah, who's in Phoenix and just thought Flagstaff was a great place to hide out. <laughs> oh my god, and I'm getting a phone call? I don't even know what this number is. Oh, hey. <clears throat> well, I feel like this is a good part to end. Once again, we massively ran off the rails on this one. Oh, don't we always? <laughs> but it's alright. I gotta get time. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for another episode of Incompetent Nerds. Catch you guys next week. Peace.